Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining the Great Dynamics Podcast. My name is Ahmed Hassan. And as always, we have a very interesting guest. Today with me is Pasha Munro. He's a veteran Royal Marine, an accomplice special forces operator and successful motivational speaker specializing in business and team coaching, mentoring, and sourcing talent. He has unbridled passion for inspiring those who engage with him to unashamedly strive for excellence, overcoming any potential obstacles to achieve their life goals. Fantastic. Pasha, thank you for joining us. Absolute pleasure. Nice to meet you. So, Pasha, please, could you, in your own words, tell us a little bit more about who you are and how you got where you are today. Certainly. So, so we're just just over the fifty age bracket now. So I'll you be, you I'm, don't look it. <laughs> <laughs> no one else can see that though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so going back to my um, early uh, early years, shall we say, um, my first kind of memories was my my real father, who was from from the far east. He uh, he and mum kind of split up, and he tried to kidnapped me he took me he put me in, he put me in his boot and drove me to Heathrow and he was going to take me back to the far east and, and, and off I was gone thankfully I'm guessing mum kind of told alerted the police and and at Heathrow he was pulled aside and I was I was pulled out and sent back home and that was the last time I ever I ever saw my father he obviously got on the flight and off he went kind of thing um ne- never to be seen again so yeah I'm Got brought up from from my mother in a industrial place in the far far north of the, the UK, in the uh, obviously in the early seventies, and at that time the kind of shall we say the people was coming into the UK to do work, um, ethnic kind of people. So that 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 came into our town. Um, so so there was workers. At, so I was kind of a new kind of generation of these kind of uh, people coming into work. So going through my schoolings, I was kind of, there wasn't many coloured kind of people. So it, it was kind of a bit, a bit of a struggle because, you know, people was harassing me kind of thing. And, and, and in them days, it was kind of m- more accepted rather than in these days where it, it's, it's completely not accepted. So it, that kind of upbringing was a challenge, shall I say. But I was... I hung around the, the cool kind of guys, so it, it kind of helped me. Um, I, I, I was good at sports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so I was kind of let into them groups. And growing up, yeah, it it it, it was just it was kind of tough, but it was co- it was good because we was out after school playing around. You know, nowadays everyone's kind of in the bedrooms playing on some kind of software. In them days, in in them days, you was outside in the fields getting filthy. Um, and, and when it's dark, that's when you actually came home and no one was bothered about it. So I think getting brought up in them days to n- nowadays, it's it's com- the, the, the change is unbelievable, really. So, yeah, growing up, mum mum kind of met few, a, a few different kind of chaps, shall we say. And through that, I kind of, she kind of changed my name quite a few times. So my name was kind of changed to the next kind of chap who she, she kind of kind of saw. Um, and then I, I was introduced to the cadets. So I, I joined the cadets and um, had a great time, met a lot of different people. And then I joined the sea cadets and I enjoyed kind of being around the water environment, really, doing all of the water activities, just being confident. I mean, where I live, there isn't any, it's not next to the seaside, shall we say. So the water is like canals. So so playing, playing in these new environments was really cool and exciting uh, and i enjoyed it so that kind i kind of that looking back that was my first part of i'm going to be some kind of something to do with the water or maritime you know um and i up from 12 till 16 i, I was in the sea cadets and, and completely enjoyed it um completely doing canoeing shall we say sailing in the in the boats etc and and it kind of focused me and I wanted to join the uh, Royal Navy so at 16 I joined I, I tried to join the Royal Navy but once I went to the career center and, and said yeah that, that's me I'd like to join and the person there was like right you come back in six months and he didn't tell me why and I was like oh okay you know up for the last four or five years that's all I ever wanted to do 
and he kind of just dismissed it. So I was like, oh, what do I do now kind of thing? And I didn't really want to join. Oh, sorry, I didn't really want to wait. And then on, on the way out, I kind of saw this Royal Marines poster kind of thing. I was like, right, I want to go there. And then I started focusing. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go for the Royal Marines. The Navy's kind of, they've had their chance. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they didn't want me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something better in my mind. I'm gonna, I want to join the Marines. And I started doing my fitness uh, and preparing myself and getting up in the mornings, doing really long runs, coming back after work and doing my press ups and my sit ups and my pull ups because that's pretty much all all you needed to do at the time. And then applied to join the Royal Marines, and yeah, I I went to Limpston at the time. Well, still at, still at Limpston, and did a three day kind of. This is this is the Royal Marines, and you have to. It was all about fitness, and you have so many challenges over that. And I got a superior pass, and then got a date to to come back, uh, and that was me. I, I joined up, joined the Marines in nineteen ninety one, and yeah, it was tough, absolutely, which is meant to be tough. I was a, a very light, small kind of guy, uh, which, you know, it's obviously the the the, the process of the training, etc. Is, is pretty much the same, I would have thought now. But the Marines, you, you, you have to carry a lot and everything you carry, you, that that's 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 how you work. Um, and from a small guy, that that was my struggle, really. Um, carrying all that equipment but without that when I didn't have yeah. to carry that I, then I was I, to- totally hyperactive no one else could keep up with me so it yeah, kind of married <laughs> married it up yeah 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 um, so your balance yeah that that was my balance so yeah, yeah. That, that, that that was like I was the tortoise but when when that was off me I was I was gone I was, I was legging it and and looking back when I was in that training you know people there wasn't there wasn't any mobile phones or anything like that, so you'd be queuing up for the one telephone in the camp to to ring your parents, etc., and see see how things are going. And 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 I never did because my parents weren't particularly bothered. There wasn't there wasn't anything at home for, for me. Um, the, and the reason why I think I needed to get out of my town was because my upbringing wasn't particularly nice and. I needed to get out of there, and there wasn't anything in that community for me. And I think if I stayed in that community because I was hyper and kind of followed the the cool guys, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I probably would have got in trouble, and my future would have been completely different. So that the military kind of saved me on on that aspect. So yeah, I I, I went through the Royal Marines training successfully, uh, passed it, and then went to a commando unit. I went to Scotland. I don't think I'd ever been to Scotland at the time, <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I went to went to Norway, Norway quite soon after that, and that was my first time that I'd actually left the UK. You know, I'd never been on holiday. I'd never parents we 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 were we was too poor to actually go away, etc. So that was an absolutely new a new concept to me. I was actually on an airplane, so you know my my, my career started opening. During the nineties, there wasn't really many operations. It was quite, it was quiet. So you was mo, it was mostly training. So one of my first kind of operations at the time was we went to Belize for six months. Uh, did did an operational tour, which was great because it was in the jungle, and I felt I felt quite at, at ease in the jungle, doing patrols around Belize, stopping stopping the Guatemalans coming in at the time, and and it was great because it was it was just. Obviously, next to Mexico, uh, we we had quite a bit of time off, so we went to Cancun, we went to Honduras, we 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 bounced around a bit. So at that age, I think I was like twenty years old. At that age, I was I was I was having some good fun as fun as well. I can only imagine, <laughs> <laughs> and, and absolutely, and being young and, and in, in them in, in them places, and uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it was exciting. It, it was it, it was it was fantastic, and yeah, and. and Throughout the nineties, the yeah, there was there wasn't much operations, but there was Northern Ireland. Did a couple of tours in Northern Ireland, which it wasn't really op. It was operational, but it was mostly walking around, making sure people were safe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It wasn't there was no bullets coming at me. There wasn't any kind of you. You wasn't doing tactics as as much, but it was it was mostly policing. So it was quite boring. It was a long long six months behind the wire as it were and then i tried to go for selection ss selection 
mid ninety mid well two thousand uh, sorry nineteen ninety seven, um, and I was unsuccessful. I wasn't good enough. I did it. I, I tried it twice actually, and yeah, balls it up. <laughs> um, I thought I was fit enough, and I, and I think I was fit enough, but I didn't have the right approach. So looking back, I I kind of got fit first, and blew myself out. So in, in the way I should have done it is not done the preparations as much and then let them prepare me through the course. But he didn't, he, he, I didn't know at the time. And then I went back to the, the Royal Marines and yeah, I, that's all I ever wanted to do at the time, be in the Special Forces. And I went off the rails and started getting drunk and started getting in trouble kind of thing and went to jail a couple of times were military jail and that kind of that was kind of a down a down part of uh, of my career that, that like two or three years I was I was in trouble quite a lot um I wasn't I, I didn't have any direction and, and and I was thinking of leaving as well, as well because that's I, I didn't think I had a a vision anymore um if I couldn't do that if I couldn't kind of be the best within the the military then what else what else could I do and the, the second time I came out of the prison, I was like, right, I think I'm going to give it another go. So I, I, I put, put my big pants on and, and, and uh, got myself out of the trouble and, and focused on, right, this, this is what I want to do now. I want a long-term kind of career and started, started back on the, 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 the process of the promotion, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and at the time I was in, I was in waters, um, I, I, I was a mortar fire controller, which is amazing. I was up the front with 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 the with the officers bringing in the mortars, and it and it was great. And then two thousand and two, early two thousand and two, I was in Northern Ireland again, and this time this this was my third Northern Ireland tour. I thought I was in Northern Ireland at the time, and I was like, "This is really boring for me. I'm I'm not interested in this. How can I get out of it?" <laughs> and there was a Royal Marines Mountain Leaders course coming up. Which I was like, right? I want to. Uh, can I leave Northern Ireland to go and do that kind of thing? And I got the green light. I didn't really know much about it, to be honest. Uh, all I knew was everyone respected mountain leaders. It was a re it was going to be tough. Uh, and I was like, well, if it's if it's the hardest, toughest thing in the Marines, then I'm, I want to go for it. And, and and I left Ireland, had a couple of weeks off, and didn't do any kind of training or or any preparation for it. And and I started that, and that was a a long, hard course from climbing, mostly climbing, moving over mountainous terrains, and then accumulating in, in Norway for three three months doing Arctic training, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, and and finishing finishing off with a rather long kind of final exercise, which, yep, successful, and 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 passed that, and went went back to my unit as a reconnaissance mountain leader expert kind of thing. Uh, and, I, and I did that for just over a year, got promoted very, very quickly. Uh, and then I thought, well, I, I, I still, I've still got energy. I still want to do something extra. And so I applied to go back to the Special Forces selection and knowing, knowing you only get two chances. And it came back that, okay, because because my idea was like I'm a mountain leader now. I've got more experience. You know, I've got a lot to give to the special forces potentially if if I was successful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they said, yeah, come come and have one more go. But you know, this is this is it. And then I had to write back to him said, thank you very much, but I'm actually too old. Can can you still let me in? <laughs> I was too old for it. And then they're like, right, yeah, you are too old, but we'll give you another chance so you're too old and you've, you're on your third chance so you know this is it you know you don't come back to me any, anymore you're not the grey man anymore I, we know who you are so you know just just get on with it so yeah thankfully they give me this other chance and I went through the selection and because I did the Royal Marines Mountain Leaders course I actually thought looking well once I did selection as well the SF selection I the Mount Romans Mountain Leaders course was more difficult and tougher for me. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Putting both them courses together, that that was a lot more tougher. Um, Physical or mental? Both, to be honest. To, okay. To, uh, you know, because 
on the Royal Marines Mountain leader course, you, at weekends you're still working, you're still preparing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or you, you you've got a lecture the, the next week, or or you're still getting thrashed. Whereas on selection, if on, on certain parts, you, the weekends are off. You, you know, you get ta- you get downtime, and during the day, once you've done your particular thing, you've got the night off, etc. So, I fa- I found that a lot. I wouldn't say easier, but the the two courses together, the the the, the SF one was easier, <laughs> more manageable. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, and then yeah, I, I passed selection was was my dream was. I, I'd got it, and then went 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 to the unit, and and absolutely, and, and because I'd done a long time within the Marines, I thought um, I thought I knew a lot, uh, and 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 I thought I, I thought I knew what I was expecting, but when I went through them gates, I was like, oh my goodness, this is how do I not know all this kind of stuff, and and, and, and it was so exciting because all these things were happening, and you're thinking, does this actually happen? <laughs> it's amazing. You know, and and it was and it was exciting, and I, and I was kind of an older guy, so I was kind of this is this is the peak that I'm at, and 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 I'm still with, and I'm I've kind of the, the guys who I've passed selection with. There's a lot younger as well, so I'm I'm keeping up with them, and and it and yeah, it opened up an absolute new bright light uh, of excitement uh, and a, a new world, and yeah, it, what an opportunity. What an absolute opportunity it was, and a very very different time in the world. You know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. absolutely. And it, and another thing I didn't realize was because all that you know, I was in the Royal Marines through the nineties, which was really slow, and and obviously just over the two thousand with the, with with the the US flipping nine eleven etc. So the world the world changed, and and then going going into the SF world just after that kind of thing. There was so much happening that it it was chaos, and it was amazing because there was there was so many things happening in different parts of, of which you didn't even think was happening. So from boots on the ground here to intelligence over air to it, it was it the, the scope was massive and, and 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 new to me absolutely new. All right, interesting. And so you. Your experience as from starting off in the Sea Cadets, I would like to know more about that. What is the Sea Cadets? So the Sea Cadets is kind of prepared you to join the Navy. So you do a lot of boating. You, you do a lot of like Navy kind of syllabuses, you know, a lot of rope work, um, kind of drill. The, the, the place you practice all is a, is a pretend ship. So you, you're walking down... The, the the alleys as it were or, or pretending it's you're on the mess deck uh, uh, and you're doing you're doing kind of navy syllabus kind of training like navigation boating navigation kind of things and which you know completely helped me from from day one and going going into a maritime kind of environment later 20 30 years later <laughs> yeah and, and it did that because you join sf do you then know that you're going to go to the special boat service? Is that already decided or is that something that? No, I, I, deci- I, de- I decided that that's, that's, that's where I wanted to go. I, and one of the biggest reasons is be- a lot of the Marines were going into that, that. So, um, so my, the people I went in selection with the Marines was, was pr- most of them was going that way. And I was more comfortable with that because the, going towards the army way was a bit different, uh, and and I I still wanted to be on the on the maritime part of the aspect of 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 the soldiering as well. Yeah, and so you joined, and how is that joining War on Terror? You know, operations are getting up tempo. Is is that something immediate or is it gradual? Oh, oh when when I, when I joined, it was like it was a sprint so it was straight on to a lot of training but the training is fast and and, and you're ex- expected to learn it really quickly to move on to the next day you know the process and because the guys you're joining have kind of done done all them kind of training before so they're kind of swept up in it so they're quite kind of quicker getting through them scenarios shall we say 
joining in and, and you ain't got a clue what you're doing and, and learning as quick as you can because you don't want to let them down as well and you don't want them to say rehearse it or, or do do that serial again because you, you don't want to piss them off. So you're trying to learn it as quick as you can and then moving on to the next day's etc. So you're, you're, you're absorbing all that information and, and being as as fast and as quick as you can to, to, to process that, to, to keep up with them guys, not to let them down and and, and to, to show that to, sh- to show them that you're capable as well without without letting them down and getting a name for you that because that, that, that's the first exposure they've seen of you as well so you need to be on your game to, because you, they're looking at you because you're that you're the new guy <laughs> yeah of course so you have to prove yourself even more yeah absolutely and and you know when you're you know at the end of the night there's no nine to five in that kind of world when when it's finished it's actually finished so when you have finished, you're processing that day, and every, you know the guys who've been there a while, they're just chilling out. But you're trying to process what you've done, and then getting ready for the next day. And it's yet yeah, again, you can't really sleep and relax because you're ready for the next day in point. Yeah, yeah. Because you want to do it again. <laughs> yeah. And and you know you're waiting for the end of the week potentially, or the the next rest day to actually rest because you're absolutely shattered from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. So what is then your first deployment when did that happened? So I, I was I, I went to um, Afghanistan <laughs> which I never I, I, I didn't I, I go to Afghanistan with, with the Marines. Um so was, that that was a new a, a new deployment for me. And it was it, it was it was it was good. Um it was tough like like it it, it should be and it, it and it and it was different. You know, I, I listened to all the stories of the Marines. You know how they was doing, what they was doing, etc. But our world, our world was different. So you know, we are doing some amazing things that you only you only see kind of movies on, and the stuff you're using, the equipment you're using, and the people who are helping you get to or or, or be successful in in in, the, in that operation or task. Then, even though there's the, the small team of you. The, there's so many support people with you to to help you and and yeah it was tough but it but it was an eye opener and it, it it was exciting it was very exciting you know going for that really bad kind of person you know it, it, totally different totally different mm-hmm. and uh what year was this well it was early well it was mid to well just just 2000 between 2007 and 2010 Okay, all right. So that was the thick of it that you were in it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, the, uh, mem- the the momentum was, uh, uh, you know, fast paced. Things changing all the time, you know, um, and very very busy because there was so, the, it it was hectic out there. You know, there was so much happening, and there's so many people, so many military people. You know, so many the, there's camps everywhere, all doing the same thing, uh, and yeah, there's. There were so many bad people. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> as, as they say, target rich environment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so how how at that moment, how does it feel from from a kid from the north, right? Never traveled before. Then you know, being in Afghanistan of all places, um, how is that? Do you sit down and think about it, or is it you just live it? And I, I didn't. I tried not to dwell on things like that i i tried to think of the time so this is me now um and and looking back the one thing i did to actually think is if my dad did actually get hold of me and put me on that um aircraft and take me take me that side i might have been in the bad man that side you know what I mean? sure yeah 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 yeah. that's a crazy <laughs> so thing actually yeah it is yeah so you know that would that was a thing i'd say out there you know if 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 i could have been over there in my flip-flops running away and <laughs> do you know what does i mean that, does that does that uh that's funny um <laughs> does, does that put things in perspective when you're engaging these people no no i mean it doesn't at all no when 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 I'm going forward, or when I was going forward and doing my job, then it wasn't. It there was no thought process that that's 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 bad people. That's you know, I, that's my job. That's my job. Look, let's let's get home 
uh, and and be happy that we've we've got home and we've been su- hopefully been successful by all, all the training we we we've, we've done thus far. Yeah. And what's your most memorable thing of that first deployment that you did? I mean, from getting there uh, and being on the the first few times being on the ground and thinking this is what I've always actually wanted to do, I'm running around doing being trying to get yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I'm 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 an ambassador for, for not only the UK but the Western world, and, and I'm trying to help the whole society over there to to try and try and make people safe there by doing what I'm doing here. And, you know, when you think of it that way, uh, and it, and yeah, I, I I got a massive buzz out of being out there. To be honest, and anyway, it was it was great because yeah, I'm trying to make a change. Uh, the whole world's looking at this, trying to make make your family safe at home because it's not just fighting here there's it if it doesn't if if we're not successful here then your family at home uh, potentially could could suffer as well yeah and for you as somebody as a mountain leader obviously afghanistan you know it's, it's oh, a very interesting environment beautiful it's it's, yeah. a, it's an absolutely beautiful place and you know if you if you've got the time just well you know, it, I'm not saying you, you don't get have the chance to travel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, looking back in history in in the 60s and the 70s, when people used to go over there for holidays and and go in the mountains and ski, you you can you can visualize that that was a beautiful. Oh, it still is a beautiful place. But yeah, obviously the people there turned it into a a horrible place, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, for, for sure. I, but 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 yeah, if 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 that was a clean, safe place, it it, it would be somewhere where I'd go because it, the mountains and the scenery and the the area is a beautiful place to 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 be if it if it, if it was safe. For sure. One question that we we get asked a lot at Great Dynamics, especially when we write about special operations and COVID action and these type of things, is what was your impression of other countries units that you operated with was there anything any any one unit that 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 no. springs out you like oh these guys are like you know that you were really impressed by we, we did really um rub shoulders with um other kind of well nations really we was always pretty much on our own we, we we'd, we'd visit people but we wouldn't visit to be on walking shoulder to shoulder on a particular um task as it were so we I, I didn't really have much experience in in seeing what what they did however we'd know we'd get the daily reports on what different uh units and different nations were doing so they you know their tier ones were doing exactly the same so it was it was it was a joint it was a joint effort but we never actually did it shoulder to shoulder to shoulder however i mean a lot of their assets would be using their assets as well so it was a privilege to use their assets because they a lot of nations got more more stuff than us so we'd be calling on other people or other nations to to provide certain certain things for us which you know that that, that, that was always more than happy and and any it, it was um rewarding for us that that that, that we was all on the same side yeah, for sure. Did you did you ever obviously during Iraq, oh, sorry Afghanistan Iraq erupted? Did you get the chance to get deployed there? I, I never went to Iraq. Okay. So when it kicked off in two thousand and three, I was actually on my mountain leaders course. Okay. All right. So yeah, and and then I actually thought how naive I was at the time. Yeah. I thought, I'll never go there because by the time I finish my mountain leaders course, it'll be finished. Yeah, and then, yeah. I'm, you know, looking, <laughs> looking back, it really didn't work like that. <laughs> For sure, uh, because like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like from your from your story, um, you have all this experience in maritime environments and from since you're a teenager, and now you're in a landlocked place, right? Yeah, how is that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but but at the time. Because I, but because I wanted to be on operations, that 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 was that was part. I was excited because I was I was doing I was I was being a soldier. Whereas in the Marines, I wasn't really doing much soldiering. I mean, 
my worst things was Northern Ireland, which wasn't, it was soldiering, but there was no, there was, there, there was no, well, there was a bit of a threat, but there was, there was, there, there was no action. There was nothing. Yeah, there was no action. It was just, it was policing rather than being a military kind of guy. So when in your career then did you get more exposure to that maritime environment? So, I mean, after after the rolling of going to Afghanistan and, and getting pre preparing to go out to Afghanistan, coming back, changing, a few years later, I I was coming up to my 22 year point which that's that's the end of your career really so i did two the last my, my last two years um i was in the training um so i was i was dive a uh, diving instructor and that's brought me back onto my my excitement for the water so i i did a lot more diving and teaching diving and then i got the opportunity to stay longer within within the military to be a, a diving kind of water maritime expert so uh, the next five years i was more to do with the water rather than the land side and that's that kind of that at the end of that that kind of finished me off from where i started on on the sea cadets on on, on the water and i finished actually on on the maritime water part uh, you know and it closed it closed the door and it fin it finished my it finished my military career, which I I'd done it, you know I, I I started off to wanting to be on that water and 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 confident and happy because a lot of people out, even we're on an island, but people don't like the water. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really weird, you know, you know, and, and a lot of people weirdly a lot of people can't even bloody swim, you know, you know, and and, and so be. And because I wasn't next to the water, there's no there's no beach where I live. I think having that excitement to to find it, find that little bit of a passion for me, kind of stayed with me to towards the end of my military career. And where I went balls out, hundred percent. This is I, I'm under the water doing all kinds of stuff on the water doing all kinds of stuff. And this is this is the the highest part of of what anybody can do because I'm 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 living that. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. So just quickly coming back to Afghanistan, um, what was your, how did you feel when you saw the chaotic pull out? And, um, oh, that was absolute, uh, absolutely, absolutely good. I mean, um, for one, one of the reasons is we, we kind of mentored a unit out there, kind of the same kind of level as we were. And we, we, we always, um, yeah, mentored them. So they kind of worked with us and, and we'd help them and train them, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know where, the, they've gone now. All that help we did and, and poured money into, it's not the money, uh, poured the training into them and looked after them. And, and one of the hardest bits, mate, is I always, I always think of the bad parts. So when you're losing people that... The bad parts where you're laying on the floor, you you know, you've been blown up, or you've been people are shooting you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That was all for nothing, really. It it seems to have all that blood spill and sweat and and hard work we've done is, is for, for for the president to say right, we're off. It's it, it it it's it's horrible. And and what we did to them, we we left them in in a horrible place with. With no security, uh, you know, the, the 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 people who lived there, they've been completely let down. Absolutely, and 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 on the other side to that, look at look what we left the bad people. We left them with all the munitions, hardware, all all that. So, if if we ever did go back, that fight is going to be a lot harder, because they've got more to come back at you with. Well, it's horrible to think about it because you can go up, down loads of little rabbit holes and and pull yourself down. And at the end of the day, it wasn't we're not at a level that we can change anything. It's it's the the people at the level who've obviously changed the whole direction of the world because out of there, that's where the bad people are now, and we're all going to suffer at some point because them bad people are going to stay there. 
they, they don't want to stay there. They want to carry on doing the badness wherever they can. Uh, and what have we? Where have we got with that? From from the two thousand early two thousands, we haven't got anywhere. And all, on all them people who've 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 never come home, you know what what was that? What was it for for them and their fa- and their families? You become an instructor. You do that. I remember you telling me before that you were really good at that at diving. Yeah, yeah. And um, does that? Because I'm just trying to be careful how I frame my question. How does that work? I mean, do you go on operations as a diver? Do you do maritime reconnaissance and these type of things? So everything you would potentially do on the ground, i.e. go and find intelligence, go find bad people, etc., etc., that's exactly the same on the water. So it's just harder. You're either under the, wa- under the water trying to f- go to a, a place, get out of the water, potentially go and find the bad people and they get in the water and go away. So that's, I, well, if you're, if, if you're, if, for instance, if you're, if, if you're uh, doing a land um, operation, you potentially, potentially could get a helicopter, drop you off, have a, have a quick fight somewhere and then get on the helicopter, go home. Whereas on the water, you've, you potentially got to go under the water on top of the water to a place have the same kind of fight and then get on the water, on the water, and then go home. So yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot harder. You know, you know what I yeah. mean? I can I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and usually that water is usually yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, is that uh, because obviously, you know, from my own perspective, I don't know how that is, but have you ever had a situation whereby you had to get into the water, let's say, hot? Uh, oh yeah absolutely i mean i mean the good thing about the water is not everyone's going to follow you so so that is that is that is that is a bonus shall we say if you're running towards the water and you know you've got stuff to to get under the water and and breathe and get out then then they're not the only thing is a couple of bullets might come in but once you get to a certain level you're you're actually kind of safe you can sit at the bottom there and and as long as you've got enough air to get get yourself (laughs) out of there you know, yeah. you you kind of say because they're not going to run up and, and all of a sudden have a dive set on and jump in the water and kind of get after sure. you. <laughs> uh, you know the the. I mean, this is obviously a a common theme. A lot of people, as you said, you know, they don't like or they're scared of the water, right? Mm. In in a, environments like that, how do you, from a mental perspective, do you ever felt fear when you're deep in the water and? Oh. You're alone. Yeah. You, yeah, you are. You are alone a lot of time. I mean, and some of the water, it's you can't see anything, and that's 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 kind of without practicing that, it, it's a very horrible place to be. So you know, if you're under the water and you can't see anything, you're going by. You know, you've got potentially a compass, and you're going underwater. That's that's all you can. That's all you can have to see. And, and you know, for instance, unless you've got a depth gauge. You won't even know if you're going up and down because you can't see the bubbles or you can't you, you you've got nothing to look at. Whereas you're, if you're on the ground, you know if you're going up and down. So you've got to learn all that kind of stuff, and you may as well just have your eyes closed. Well, it's just a compass. You, that's all it is. You just got to say same as you would on land, but you can't actually see where you're going. So you you you're looking at that compass and, and you're following that compass until until you hit something. <laughs> Fair enough. Sounds pretty. <laughs> sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, and what year did you did you go out um, active? 2019. I left. 2019. And then, what's the step then? How, you know, what goes through your mind? When I left, I left for because I wanted to leave. I'd, I'd done five years extra, uh, and I was like, I've had enough now. I'm tired. I've. I. I, I want to be a quote a civilian, and that's why I thought. So I left and I was a project manager for a wind turbine company for the for, for two years. And it wasn't particularly my direction. I, I thought I wanted, I thought in my mind, that's what I wanted. And I was in an office and I was with people who didn't really get me. And it's hard to talk nice to people. Not that I'm a, a, not a, a bad person. I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly <laughs> yeah. what you mean. Directness uh, is not always yeah, appreciated. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. before you're talking to people, you, you, you really think it. So you're thinking how to talk to people. Not that I'm a, I'm a bad communicator, but being in the military for so long, you know how to talk to people. And, and to get the best out of people, sometimes you, you take the piss out of them, you, you know, and, and you're mugging people off all the time. But this this is a different world. <laughs> this It's a lot to, lot to take in. And I did that for nearly two, well, two years. And I was like, I, it's time to move on. So I, I thought, well, I'm, I've always been in security. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to go into the security world. And, and I went straight to be a um, close protection person for a royal family straight away. Um, and I did that and I enjoyed that. I was back with a few people I used to work with. So the banter was back in. Um, and it, it was something that came, it's something that comes easy because we've, I've, I've always been in insecurity. So r- walking around London with somebody to look after them, I'm, I'm used to that. And I did that for a few years and then I left that and then went bounced around the circuit as it was. A few, a few very, a few billionaires. I looked after a, a few celebrities, you know, coming in, doing world tours. And I was kind of at the, at the, at the high point where people, I, I was, I was getting these, these jobs of these high kind of billionaires, um, celebrities, and I was getting phone calls to, to, to go there. And at the beginning of this year, for instance, I went to, I got a call to go to Ukraine and I really, that, that kind of excited me that I was going back <laughs> into that, into that world again. Yeah. 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 Um, and not that my family enjoyed that. But, no, but I can only imagine. I, I got a bit of, but I was, I was yeah. like, I'm, 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 I'm at this age again. I'm, I'm kind yeah. of going back to, yeah, going, going back to a bit of danger, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I went there for the um, for the anniversary in in February because it was predicted it was going to be a bad time, but it, 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 thankfully it wasn't. But I was looking after news reporters um, going around going around the, the Ukraine, and uh, yeah, it was exciting. And I came back after that, and then yeah, again looked after a few celebrities. But then then I I had the idea that. Or, in fact, I went to um, look after a few um, lawyers and um, um, KCs in a different country for an investigation. And when we came back, one of the guys, the lawyers, was like, right, I, I like what you do. We, shall we get our, a company set up? And, and that's that's the line I went. We started up a company, and now I do that as a as as, as a director, and, and I'm finding the work and getting the tier the, the guys who I used to work with the work so I, I quite enjoy that now whereas I used to be the middleman working for somebody I'm I'm getting the work now and getting m- my network the work and, and, and I, I find that quite rewarding and really exciting to be honest yeah I, I can identify with that after years of bouncing around yeah that's it's a good feeling to particularly for it's it's hard, you know, if you're yeah. out of that organization with all that support, and and now you know you're in a big bad world, and yeah. you don't have that support. It's uh, it's really great that you can help others and support their families. Mm. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's really good. And so your company, can you tell me a little bit more what you yeah, guys so do? Yeah, so it's, it's it's called Black Box Global. What we do is we do the the high celebrities the the, the vips um we, we've got a global reach it's not not just that we do surveillance um i'm a part of um the institute of professional investigators so we can go out and investigate di- different um different scenarios as it were we do a lot of work with the government i.e we've, we've got a few meetings this this month with clients in the house of lords so we've got meetings with with people who are there's a lot of lawyers who go to various countries who, yeah, again do investigations, um, particularly the Middle East, um, human rights, human. So they're going to, they they go investigate human rights activities where they they need protection because that they're, they're they're not particularly wanted in them countries. Um, so we do that. We do a lot of surveillance with with my with our network. So we've got the tier one, the the military kind of tier one umbrellas of the guys. But also when we used to be in the tier one, we used to work with the same kind of level, the police and and the, and the surveillance kind of guys. So 
we've got that network as well where if we are doing surveillance we've got the top kind of people who who've who've done it forever and and the good thing about that is because the equipment change is so vast to keep on top of the, the ideas you've got to be in that world to understand what the next kind of gucci gad the, the cool yeah. gadget yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? That I, I can do you. that can stop a lot of your hard work. Where if you just pl- if you just put that in that situation, that that's doing all that work for you, kind of thing. So yeah, we, we've got a, quite a big umbrella. But the, but the good thing when I'm talking to the clients is is the operatives or the people we've got are, are from the UKSF or the the the, the GCHQ kind of levels um, and the the top surveillance kind of operator so with that that comes more rewarding to the client that they're they're confident or and happy that they've got that bubble around them protecting them and 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 a, a lot of this is as well is the guys are not necessarily the big six foot six blokes who got skinheads and sunglasses following them it's more of a discreet person following them the Letting real them, gray man. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And and yeah. the clients like that because they don't they want to they want to do their normal pattern of life without someone on their shoulders trying to money cuddle them as it were. They want to they, they want to go out into the world but knowing that somewhere around there someone's protecting them if they're going to get into a situation or someone notices them and takes it upon themselves to potentially do some kind of harm to them. Yeah. Could you tell me also a little bit more because uh, you do some mentoring and speaking? Yeah, so I've got quite a few people who potentially are joining the uh, joining the military. I like to try and mentor them. So um, help them prepare themselves to to actually join. So I, I get I get a lot of excitement out of that. And also with that as well, I, I, I do a lot of speaking for schools. I'm, I'm an advisor for a school that helps them in my local area potentially get work either in the local area or give them ideas of what's out there because I've got quite a good network and, and I can actually talk to the CEOs of certain companies, whereas the school people and the teachers, in, in they, they haven't necessarily got the reach. So I, can't, I, I, I help them kind of um, potential um, students, as it were, to... Give them, uh, give them more, more ideas, and with that as well, I, I, I've, I, I'm listed on quite a few companies who I do afternoon, after dinner speeches or motivational speeches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I, I, I do that as well. I, oh, and and I think that's what it is. If if you if you're not busy, then it's boring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't have to tell me. <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, somebody should tell my wife. But uh... oh, well, that is that is that is that is a hard part of you know what we want may not necessarily be what your partner or your wife wants. But but it but that's just that's that's negotiation, isn't it? That 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 that's and, and if if you didn't have the inspiration to do your things, then you'd have a miserable time back home anyway, wouldn't you? Absolutely, yeah. No, it's it's um, really it's a privilege. I think mm. what we do. It's a yeah. it's a privilege, and um, I'm I'm glad that I can do it, and and I can hopefully do it for you know the next absolutely decades to come. Let's say that. Yeah. Um, and it grows us. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the amount of people, even through this, you know, meeting yourself, and and uh, and and uh, I think also I can say this fairly confidently that you you and I are working on some other projects. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, have a look out for that, guys listening. I think you will like it. And uh, yeah, trying to merge good work and... Yeah, uh, juggling. <laughs> juggling, yeah. Um, I always ask people at the end of, of these podcasts uh, a couple of questions that I think that I think about a lot and some not, not that serious. But for yourself, uh, what, what keeps you up at night? I try not to. If 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 I if I don't if I go to bed thinking, I will not sleep. I'm a thinker. Um, I have to try and park things before before I go because I'm I'm hyperactive, and once I just turn it off, I I can actually turn it off. I'll turn my phone off. I won't even have it in the same room, and then 
that's time for for me and the family. That's everything's gone. Every, all it, and it's all, all it's all to do with the electrics and then the internet. We actually get to a point during the uh, on the evening where the children, because they're they're playing the games, etc. Everything gets turned off. I just I just go and pull the wire, literally pull the wire out the out the out the out the internet, and everything stops. That and that's that's it. And it's cruel, but you've got to be cruel to be kind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I hundred percent agree. Yeah, we have we do the exact same thing. Yeah, we we switch off at a certain time, and then they can read. You know, yeah, there's a few uh, slammed but, uh, doors at the time, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. But, yeah, but you know, it it takes over us absolutely takes over us, and 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 if you don't, then the next day you're going to be tired and moody, and 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 you can't and you can't focus. You're not going to get through that day, and, and you're not going to you're not you like you say we're not going to grow. Yeah, absolutely, nine hundred percent. And what advice would you give? Young people that want to get into this field, to this industry. I, I, I think the biggest advice is, aim, aim for something you think is ridiculous, because that is achievable, com- completely. If you aim to be something that yeah, I'm going, I'm going to go do that kind of job. You know, I'll, I'll do it for you know, it's easy. I, I know I can easily do it. No, get out of your comfort zone, go for that thing right up there, and go for it. And don't take no, don't take no for an answer. Because a few times within my military career, there'd be like a some uh, a rank above me saying, "No, you're not doing that." But go round them. You might piss him off, but it's your life. You you've got you've got to live with the fact that, for instance, if I I'm at the position where I says, "I wish I'd done X at a certain time." I'm not that. I've never been at that position. I've 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 got to got to where I've gone. And gone further and further and further. If you're if you if you're at an age where you say I wish I wish I wish, then you've not lived your life. You always go for an opportunity and go for it. That's that's. I mean, to me, it's music to my ears, and you're you're preaching to the converted, as they say, to me. But I think for people, it's very important to hear. Yeah. Because I remember when I would speak about the things that I wanted to achieve as a young person. I mean, uh, I'm not that old, but uh, I like to think. But I would have, you know, parents, friends, you know, a lot of yeah. friends, you know, yeah. like that's ridiculous or that's crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. and and I know this sounds ridiculous for, for young people. And I know a lot of them are listening to this. Get other friends. Yeah. I mean, it, I know it's a crazy thing to say. Yeah, yeah. But uh, for me, it was, I was in environments where people just laughed at my dreams. Or, yep. or my goals, right? Yep. And uh, and I just continue what I was believing in, and yep. uh, and you know push through. So yeah, I I really think that's 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 a great bit of advice. A bit a bit more lighthearted question. Yeah, uh, we always ask in the podcast to the people, what are you reading? What are you watching? What are you listening to right now? Um, I try not to get into watching much on series and you, you you always meet blokes who like that what what series and what what and, um I, I i don't i don't much to be honest i when i when i come home from work and i sit down i watch what the wife wants to watch mm-hmm. there you go <laughs> <laughs> um but i don't i'm not really a, t- a tv kind of person um if i'm if i'm at home i'll i'll go out for a run i i that's i i want to be out i want to take the dog for a walk or I, I that's what I'd rather do, uh, and, and and I like I like listening to music. It's just I'm a music kind of guy, uh, and it's not it's not a particular kind of person, band, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I just like I just like sound, and if I if I haven't got sound, I make sound up and I walk around making noises to myself. <laughs> and he's re- I'm, I'm not a quiet person. Do you know what I mean? No, no, I don't know, no, no. I I hear you. I thought I was crazy, but now I hear <laughs> yeah. that you are too. I mean, yeah, and, and I make stupid little. My, my my wife's always, you know, stop making them stupid little noises. And sometimes I don't even know I'm actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I think honestly, I think because I do this, I think it's you've probably never been diagnosed with ADHD. I think that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, that's that's a proper fact. But because we live with we live with it, I, it doesn't bother me. I, you know, as long as I'm not hurting and. It, 
I'm not hurting anybody else, and I'm happy in my in in, in my in, in me. I'm happy in me, and I'm and 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 you know, if people are laughing at that, then I, I, who who's who, who cares? I, you know, if 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 you're laughing at me, let's let's have a little chat and see see what you've actually done in your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure, yeah, that's a good one. Actually, <laughs> um, do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, I'm 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 looking forward to. Um, Doing some some more, more more work together and 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 being more chaotic as it were. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 More interesting, yeah. more interesting yeah. work. Yeah. Let's say yeah. that. Ab yeah, 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 absolutely. And 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 it's opening more doors, and, and that's what it's all about. I like opening other doors, you know, and and meeting different people. You like that? Oh, I can actually work with that kind of person. And and if you if you don't open them, you you never know. And if you're not ever ever reaching out and networking. And you stay in your little bubble. That's a boring bubble to be in. <laughs> if you're, you've got the same people, the same, the same routines, and and then the same, the same coming home, watching the same series, the same. You know, why would you be boring? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're. Uh, my father said always to me like, uh, you're not living, you're being lived. Yeah, ex absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. Uh, and uh, I think you know, for me at Great Dynamics. The, the only way that we've been successful uh, outside of the all the online world, the real stuff, let's say that, yeah. has been through the network. You know, yeah. I don't think I've ever really done myself really anything that yeah. that I can say. You know, I, I'm completely self-made. Yeah. You know, there's always yeah. somebody that that have helped us along the way. You know, that give advice yeah. or open the door. So in yeah. that regard, I I completely agree with you. And and on on that as well, because of the network, because I do a lot of my stuff on LinkedIn. When people ask, "Can you can you do something?" and you don't know these people, it's like, oh, "Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try and do that." Uh, but that opens that potentially opens up something else later on, where you're saying, "Oh, by the way, can you actually?" It 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 it, it comes back at you. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think uh, and and the internet has made the world such a small place. Yeah, you know, so so it's it's easy to reach out to somebody, and and obviously there are uh, communities yeah. like like yours, you know, the SF community that is very insular, mm. you know, and I think for people who are a bit more outside of that, and you know, as you said, network, it's easier to then you know help those people get into other networks and and yeah. grow that. And so in that regard, I think uh, you're doing a really an amazing job, and and I really want to thank you for doing the podcast and. As you said, I'm really looking forward in in, in other cool stuff that we uh, that we talked about and uh, and trying to do. And um, Pasha, thank you so much for for telling us Absolute your story. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And for everybody listening, guys, thank you so much for supporting the podcast. And if you're if you're hearing this on any platform, please give us feedback. You know, uh, share it. Um, and if we deserve it you know give us five stars if if we deserve one star tell us why and we'll try to do better and uh, some other cool stuff coming guys in the in the near future and uh, i'll speak to you guys soon thank you